Happy New Year, and this is a no fool zone. So if you act like a fool, there's the door. See ya. All right, this is gonna be a beginning of classes. So if you need to learn anything about turbine spraying, hopefully the years that I've been doing it, We'll be able to help you out somehow and you'll be able to start painting some things you'd want to paint. So below here are some things we're going to talk about and just so you know I'm not going to be doing any spraying in this video. I'm just going to be talking about stuff. And one of the comments that was brought up was, thank you for making the comments by the way, I do appreciate those was someone's interested in buying an Avanti or an Apollo or making their own machine and getting the Apollo and whether 0.8 millimeter needle and tip or a 5.5 or PSI is gonna be good for spraying. And what are my feelings about that? And what would I recommend? First of all, if you're gonna buy anything, make sure it fits within your budget and it fits within your budget. Now the second thing I'm going to say is, in the hands of a decent refinisher, you'll be able to get good results. So now when we talk about the spray guns and the equipment and the machines, we're going to talk about things that they give you that one manufacturer might not. And that's going to mean their design, how they've introduced into the world of automotive spraying or just whatever world they're trying to be in, whether it be non-automotive cabinet refinishing or automotive and cabinet refinishing. A couple of uh, brands we're going to talk about here is the Avanti and the Apollo. Why? Because that's what I'm using right now. I'm using both. And to me, I can tell you that this hand, this gun, the spray gun feels comfortable. This hand, the spray gun feels comfortable. They both feel comfortable. So that's not an issue to comfort. Second thing is uh, how are they going to spray? One costs like under $100, and one is in the hundreds of dollars. So what's gonna make it better, or what's it gonna be for you to decide whether you wanna save your money and buy the more expensive one, or you only got so much cash, you wanna buy the inexpensive one and start, you know, start spraying. I'm just gonna wing this anyways, so I'm just gonna freeform it, and hopefully you'll understand what I'm trying to say. Actually, I'll tell you right now what I'm gonna say is, it's up to you to make a decision. I'm only gonna tell you what my results have been and I've been able to achieve really good results with all of this stuff. So where is it gonna come into play with um, your skill level? If you know what turbine spraying is, it's not using an air compressor, it's using a large volume of air in CFM at lower PSI. And the reason why it's lower PSI is because it meets a true HVLP mandate, which is below 10 PSI to air cap. Now, there's people who use an air compressor spray gun and their, their pressures are higher than a turbine spray gun because their orifices are smaller. These spray guns with turbines have larger size inside diameters because they're pushing more air through. This is not compressed air, this is air going through a tangential fan, tangential fan, which has fans stacked up on top of each other, which creates the sucking of the air and the push out of the air. The more fans you have, the more PSI you can generate and the more CFM you'll be able to achieve. So that being said, we're spraying under 10 PSI. The Avanti machine is advertised at 9.5 PSI and I call it wild PSI. And the reason why is because you cannot adjust it with the machine, technically. There's ways to do it, but that's not what you want to do. The Apollo machines, you can adjust it with a variable, a variable dial that adjusts the PSI. So that's pretty much a big difference in those features. The second big difference is in heat dissipation. Turbines, their biggest enemy is going to be heat. As, as you use the machine longer in your production run, it's going to generate heat. If it's uh, Took down this because we're in a frozen zone. I don't want to show it the temperature when it starts going this way instead of that way. Anyways, uh, if you're spraying at 100 degrees, 
your machine sucking in air that's 100 degrees. And if your machine is, has a good design to keep itself cool, it will be not as bad for spraying. But if your machine tends to run hot, it's not going to be good. So you might want to put a fan there, all right? Uh, what else? Okay. Hmm. So back to the PSI because that's one of the main questions was, uh, is 5 PSI, 5.5 PSI good to spray base coat? Because with the Avanti run at 9.5, and 9.5 is their advertised, but technically when you actually let the bleed through occur, it's less than that. It like drops a whole PSI down to 8.4, 8.5 PSI because you have to combat the heat and for the longevity machines, you need to have air bleed. Because if you don't have air bleed, you're just banging on that back pressure. So for longevity, they have one main air, uh, air bleed port in the back of the Avanti and another small secondary one with a tiny little orifice. The Apollo has their own version of their air bleed and they also have a kick down feature which sets it down to idle. So when you turn on one machine, the Avanti, it stays on uh, when you turn the Apollo, it goes on, but then after so many seconds, it idles down, which is a good feature for longevity. But it's going to cost you. That's where the difference is going to be is features. Now, the other thing, too, uh, what's your usable PSI for spraying? Because we're going back to 5.5 and 5 PSI for base coat. And I've sprayed as low as 3 PSI and even slightly lower than that. If I'm doing door jams or just touch up areas where I need to get the PSI low. And also when your PSI is high, you create more fan width and more overspray. So with lower PSI, you actually have a smaller fan. So you have less overspray. But it works also in a different way. The lower your PSI, the less amount of atomization you can achieve at the air horns. Right up here where everything gets broken up and when you spray you're either going to have orange peel or you're going to have a smooth glossy glassy surface so if you start to see that hey I need to have a machine that I can get into small little areas and do small touch-ups the Avanti is going to be a, a wild PSI kicking it up there you know 8.5 when you're actually spraying but it's going to drop down with pressure drop because the spray can consume 3 PSI um, you're going to have to deal with a much wider fan. So you get to reduce it by adjusting the back. So what I found is when you adjust the back of, this, of the Avanti spray gun, it will lower the fan, but your PSI drops. So if your PSI drops, guess what's gonna happen? Orange peel is a possibility. And the reason why is because you actually have less PSI to break up the material but if you go low PSI with the Apollo you still have the ability ability to atomize real well at low PSI it's just that for whatever reason the PSI in one machine at low PSI on the variable adjustment and the PSI on the wild PSI machine if you adjust it at the machine it's more it's better than trying to adjust it at the spray gun. Now, Apollo came up with their version of, similar to the back of this, it's called overspray control. It fine tunes, I call it air choker. They're both air chokers, but it's certain, they're different types of the same thing. They're both air chokers with different ways of how they choke the air. If you have a need to reduce your air by choking it, the CFM, still needs to be there and the PSI needs to have the CFM so if you don't have the CFM behind your PSI you're just gonna have more orange peel this will have a little more orange peel at lower PSI when you're trying to adjust the fan with with the air choker this has a fan adjustment in front and you can notch down the fan at the air distributor and keep this wide open and lower the PSI of the machine. That's just the way I see that it, it works that way. So is it good or bad? It's 
It's whether it's achieving it on the wall that you what you want and you can deal with. Sometimes you say that, well, I'm spraying primer, it's gonna be thick. I gotta lower my PSI. I gotta choke it down with this, lower it with this, but I can't have a lot of that. So I gotta bring it down. So now when you bring it down, if you don't have the CFM, it's gonna be more orange peel. But if you do have the CFM, it'll be less orange peel and still tighter. Or you can cone it. So now you're spraying with a cone, but then you're creating more overspray. So you're wasting. So there's a balance. This tends to save more material on paint because it is able to achieve less waste and more, it, it just, you're gonna get, I think, see that's where it gets really tricky in the gray areas now because you're, you're saying that, because what I'm trying to tell you is that if I go down in PSI, I'm gonna have more orange peel. Only if you don't have the CFM. So if you can, get a machine that has the variable rate or if you have to get a machine or you are fine with getting a machine that is not adjustable you don't mind the orange peel when you try to go down in fan width that's fine because you just do more sanding you know it's all correctable after you're done spraying anyways and uh, if you decide well you know what that's not a big deal for me to to have a I need more Atomization, I'll go wide open on the fan. I'll have a much wider fan, a little more overspray, but then here's your other problem. Now you can use more paint. You can use more paint unnecessarily because instead of instead of spraying this thing, you're also spraying that thing over there and that thing over here. If you reduce it so you can spray here, you know, when you spray a panel, you don't just spray at the edge, you spray in the air. So the sweet spot of the, the fan is sort of like right in here. So you catch that right here, and then you come through here, and you come through here, and you come down there. That's just the way you effectively create the most even of the coatings. Otherwise, if you start here, it's gonna be way thin on top. <laughs> so, hopefully you're still following along. And so now we're, we're dealing with, okay, 5.5 PSI and what tip because the tip is also going to be an issue right the Avanti comes with a 1.3 and you can get it to a 0.8 all the way up to I think 2 point something the Apollo goes down to 0.5 it has more options and you can go higher up into the 2.5 actually and do you really need those tips? It really depends on what you're gonna spray. But I can tell you this much for sure. Most base coats, pretty much all base coats, handle 0.8 millimeter needle and tip. I've done it with 1.3. I've done it with 1.3. But here's the thing, I just use more paint. And if you're spraying more paint, it's a heavier flood, you gotta move faster, which is great because it allows you to spray faster. You know, the olden days, back when I was first learning, there were a lot of, I mean, just going back 10 years now, since 2024, there's a lot of learning curves because there's like no one who was really in the automotive side with really getting into it. So I got into it and I was able to be able to figure it out in the way I don't want to spray, and I want to spray not so painfully slow. Okay, I don't, paint, I don't want to paint slow. I want to paint like I used to paint. Air compressor. Paint real slow. Yeah, your hand will get heavy because you're just trying to hold it up while you're moving real slow. You don't need to do that. You can move now because it's a balance of the combination of the needle and tip, how much CFM you got, and the PSI you have. So you can move faster to Devante because it's got, you know, higher up PSI. You can move real fast into the Apollo because you can crank it up and go high PSI. And with the air cap choices, the Avanti gives you limited air cap. The Apollo gives you multiple choices for different combinations of the type of thickness and viscosity of the paint you're going to spray. If you know what type of paint you're going to be using and you know the, like how thick or how thin it is and how it 
tends to be when you're spraying it. Let's just say you're coming from the air compressor side. You're an automotive refinisher, you're used to using a like a regular air compressor style spray gun. You're used to mixing it up and then dumping a bunch of reducers. So you can say, hey, it's all glassy and smooth and flat because I use a lot of reducer and it sprayed a lot better. Well, turbine spraying, I don't like to over reduce. I don't like to reduce. I don't want to use any reducers. Why? Because when you spray a layer of paint and you have a lot of reducers, let's just say this is how thick your paint is. Now you add some reducers, your paint when you spray, it's gonna be this thick about because you're using the same needle and tip. But when it shrinks down, it's gonna shrink down because all them solvents gotta evaporate someplace. So I don't like to use a lot of reducers. So then when my paint dries, it just dries a little bit like that and hardly any reducers or hardly any solvents to evacuate or off gas. So that's why when you start to like see people on the YouTube stream talking about all oh, my glassy finish and then they start to say, well, did you spray? Well, yeah, add some reducer and crank the pressure up and yeah, make it super thin and thin and easy to spray. It's gonna lay down smooth like glass, but eventually it's gonna go pucker up because it's the solvent's gotta evaporate. So that's why high solids come into play. In the body shop side, everyone's using high solids, 1.5 application because you have less of the shrinkage and it's fast application and you're done. But will it work with these turbines? Because there's a thing called compact isocyanates. And if you think about it, they're either gonna be like a small ball bearing or large marbles. And those things gotta flow through spray gun. So you start to see they're they're flowing through and having glassy finishes, how much reduction are they using? Because if you're not using reduction, you have to know how to work with a turbine so you don't get the over -speed. The good thing is, these can all work to not give you orange peel, but your combination has to be just right. For example, I'll, go, I'll use 2042 PPG Speed Clear. Okay, goes on fast, goes on fast, dries real fast, but it's gonna have more texture in general, just as the way that clear is. Another example, 2021, goes on nice, glasses out, but turn around, come back, it might run. That's just the way that clears, but it lays out real nice. Another example, nascent clear coat. All right, easy to spray with air compressor, easy to spray with, with turbine spray guns. Difference is, it costs less for sure, but is it bad or is it good? It all depends on how much work you want to do later on. And I'll give you an example. We were uh, spraying um, my neighbor's S10, and he wanted to use some flake, so we sprayed with some flake. The other neighbor comes from an air compressor side collision, used to work on a bunch of Corvettes. So we started spraying, and he noticed going down with orange peel, okay? Now, orange peel is not bad if, depending on what you're doing, it's gonna occur. You're laying down some graphics, you're gonna get some peel, because you're burying stuff, burying stuff, and you're stacking them and stacking them. And you're still gonna sand it at the end anyways. So you got these people who will comment like, oh, that's so much orange peel. And it's like, well, wait till it's done. You know, just because it has orange peel now, doesn't mean it's gonna have orange peel later when it's done. That's what paint correction for later on. But back in the old days, we used to shoot where the way you wanna see it today is the way you wanna see it tomorrow. And if the way you wanna see it today needs to be glassy, it was a lot easier because of the way the materials were made back then. Nowadays, materials are made differently, and you just have to know how to work with them to pick which one is better for less peel, which one is better for fast dry, which one is better for the pocketbook, and which one is definitely gonna ruin your pocketbook. When you talk about $100 clear, $900 clear, that's a big difference. Where is the gain? You gain it in the pocketbook here, you gain it in time here because it it just it's just weird that way. The more you spend, the less you're supposed to spend in time later, and also with the utilities having to dry that stuff or whatever. It's supposed to get you in and out of the booth faster, so you can get more cars in the booth. But for most people who want to get into turbine spraying, if you're a DIY, you're spraying in your 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 own workshop, in your garage or something, you're you're spraying mobile or even at the body shop level. You're gonna to have to deal with 
um, how you're going to get the same results that you would be used to and not have the main hiccup issues with you know figuring it out so I'm trying to make it easy but probably just rambling on making it more difficult so okay let me slow down and show you a couple of things first then we'll come back but um, air caps these air caps there's different designs in air caps you know Avanti's air cap looks like this I'm not even going to come up close I'm just you just they're different some have little holes some have no holes except for the holes on the side air horns Avanti has two little holes and two holes on each side of air horns. Apollo has no holes on one of their air caps and two holes on the side. Another one, the green one, which I consider the all-around A for automotive. Uh, it has small little holes, like uh, two, four, five on each side here, and then two on each side. And of course, they all have center holes. Now. The big thing about the center hole, let's talk about this right away. The center hole, from my testing, and the way I see it, the way it works, the smaller the center hole, the more your fan's gonna be at a certain thing. The bigger it tends to go a little wider, but there's a, there's a diminishing return with going too big of your center hole. And that diminishing return is, you're not gonna be able to atomize automotive clear coat as well. There's like a magic, magic circle size that tends to be where, man, this is working really good. What size is it? Blank 30 seconds? Yep, it sure is. And the other one is, what size is it? It's a couple 30 seconds more, all right? So the center hole design is gonna be important, which is also part of the importance of how are you going to choose? See, one gives you more options, one only gives you so many options. So, it's kind of like, I'm just kind of rambling so you can kind of see and make your own mind up like, hey, wow, yeah, you got some more options here. Okay, good, but I'm fine with that. You know, you'll, you'll figure it out. You'll see that, all right, you've seen the finishes I've been spraying. Um, they look pretty decent, I think. And you can use it with any of these and it'll work. Now, what else here? Uh, yeah, here I'm, this is important too because this I'm going to bring closer. Okay. See these things? Alright, this one is the Avanti, this one's the Apollo. Okay, so this screws on to the hose end, but look there's a constrictor a restrictor with the Avanti. And with the hose mod, told you I'd be all over the place with uh, talking about stuff, but you know, we're just free forming. So the Apollo hose plug does not even fit the Avanti because it pushes that plastic thing back and doesn't seal. Right now, it can slide back because it's not screwed on, but this doesn't go on as well. I recommend getting the Apollo coupler if you want to do those hose mod things I was talking about. And if you want to use a hose plug from the garden center to make it work. So there's another video on that, on that but I thought, thought I'd bring it up, you know, like bring it up right now. And since we're talking about like this kind of weird stuff anyways, I'll bring this up too. So someone had asked uh, what, what's the gauge you use? All right. So this is my cobbled up gauge. It's basically the end of my hose from my Flexilla with the end of my Apollo hose, which I took off the end of it, made it up to here, drilled a hole through here. And this is a, a Harbor Freight plastic welder from years ago. I really can't trust it anymore because I dropped it and it's cracked right here. I peeled off the rubber to inspect it and it's cracked, but this was, this was working. Now it's testing it. Now, um, you see it's cracked right there too. It dropped it by accident. There's a crack. So, 
I took it apart and I tried to recalibrate it by working with the, me the mechanism in the back and I wouldn't trust it to be accurate to zero, no minus or plus. It's got a plus or minus or, you know, maybe two. But anyways, this is what it looks like. And this right here is a garden hose Y adapter. I drilled it out, retapped it so I could swap this out, but I, right now I sealed it. And I could put it in here so then I could put this on the wall, you know, and be able to have a gauge on the wall so I could look at it like, like down there and then have the gauge and kind of see, a, um, you know, witness pressure right there. But I just got to get another gauge and then I'll be able to do that. So, all right. Uh-huh. So, uh, so that's that part of the show. Now let's get back into the, the needles and tips because along with the pressure of 5.5 and 0 0.8 millimeter needle and tip, 0.8 millimeter needle and tip will work with base coats. It'll work with clear coat, but you gotta know what type of clear coat you're using and if it's gonna work really well. Like, again, we're gonna talk about the compacted isocyanides. Are they marbles? Are they ball bearings? Are they big or are they small? Okay, with the 0.8, yeah, you can spray it. And if you need to, most people might want to try just reducing it so it can flow better. But the thickness is not going to be a thicker mill's thickness on that panel. So I actually like to spray with the 1.0. 0.8 works, yeah. But 1.0 to me is more efficiently effective for pretty much a lot of stuff. And then if you bump up to 1.3, the bigger you go, the thicker you get, but the more the more air you need to break that thickness up, and the more air you're gonna also, or the more um, the more paint consumption you're gonna use because you're laying it on thicker. If you want to lay it on thicker so you can sand more off later, you might get more peel. But if you're gonna sand it off later, who really who really minds that? Because you'll have people who have like five layers of clear. So I'm gonna get it sanded down so it's smooth as glass, but you still wanna have the film development, film build thickness. So if you use a 0.8, it'll look good. It'll be a good used car look. It'll be a good, looks looks like a decent hood, looks like whatever. But if you wanna have thicker film build, you gotta use a little bit thicker or a little bit bigger orifice of a, a needle and tip combination. So the Avanti I've been spraying with a 1.3, Works really well, sprays really fast. With the Apollo, I'm using a, a 1.0 with the B air cap or the A air cap. And when I bump up to 1.3, it does lay it out, but it, it just uses more paint. And I, you only need to get so thick, right? You only need to get so thick. If you need to go thicker, then you're just gonna know that you gotta use more paint because definitely. 0.8 uses less paint, but it's got to choke it through a smaller hole. 1.0 gives you a good coverage and good thickness, and it's big enough that it gets it through that that small little hole. And then a 1.3 gets it out there so you can move really fast. But you got to move fast because if you move slow, it might tend to sag and run on you because it'll build faster. And that's just one of the sizes of choice. You know, what should I use? Because someone will tell you, oh, I've been using a point eight. Yeah, well, yeah, you've been using a point eight, but which clear are you using? What brand of clear is that? Because one brand of clear might work really well with a point eight, and one brand of clear just be struggling. You're like, man, we can't even get this thing to flow out, right, flow out right. And then you start playing with wanting to get the pressures up, and then just switch the air cap or switch the needle and tip. Apollo allows you to do that, being able to switch around the Avanti. You only get one choice of the air cap and a needle is going to be your only, um, you know, they're, see if they're, yeah, their center holes are different sizes. So that's, that's one thing that they're doing good. The center holes from a 1.8 to 1.3. See, so yeah, center holes are different sizes. 
So at least they, they've changed their center hole size, which is good because that to me uh, shows that the 1.8 will have a compatibility. But here's the other thing too. I'm excited about this now. You can, you can uh, mix and match these. So let's just say you got a 1.3 needle on tip, but you're like, you know what? I want to use a 1.8 air cap. You can do that, and it'll give you a bigger center hole, which would give you more, it would give you more atomization, but you might get a little more orange peel, <laughs> just because the center hole's too big. It's just going to do that. It's just going to have like a bigger orange peel pattern because it's a little too big, but you can definitely lay it out thick. So if you wanted to like, I have got so much primer, it's medium thick, okay? And I want to spray it thick, but not, it's thin enough that I can spray with a one, here it is. It's thin enough that I can spray with a 1.3, but I want to flood it more with a, 1.8 center hole air cap that could work just like that's another option now see I just didn't even, I didn't even think about that but um, that could work so you got a little bit more flexibility now because actually the air caps can also be swapped out and I would swap them out if just for experimental sake you know so uh, I guess what time is it now okay so let me see that let's show you this one Okay, you've seen this one, right? This is my um, HVLP Futuristic HVL Spray Mod. I showed you the one for the Avanti. It's the, um, where is it? This thing over here. Seen it? This one. Okay, this one's from the water bottle, right? This is the water bottle one. Guess where this one came from? Okay, this one came from a rodent spray can, which had the dome shape. I cut it to fit it and just use regular um, HVAC aluminum foil tape to keep it in place. Haven't had any issues with it. I just, the tape's been there forever right now. Just just wipe it clean when it's done. And it, this is the way this one looks like. This is a first generation mod for the turbine spray on with the uh, Palo, okay. So <laughs> that's um. I guess that's something we'll talk about. All right. Uh, what other choice can you make to determine what you want to use the or whatever you want to buy? Okay. Look at the the Apollo give you another extra choice. All right. You tap or bottom feet. Bottom feet only with the Avanti. It's a difference. If you are someone who's coming over from collision side, spraying with gravity feed, you can be like, wow, where's the thing on tap? Okay, it's on the bottom. Now, the aluminum cups, you know, they're big in the bottom. People look at it like, wow, I don't want that. But you put the PPS on it, it's a whole other type of spray gun. It's like modern style. <laughs> and I like the bottom feed because it gives you your weight down here your wrist. I like the Apollo because you can also use it up on tap for the gravity feed. There's a difference in savings too. When you use the bottom feed, you will have a little bit left that you just can't get up there and sucked up. It's about a tablespoon. But you can also just do this. Use it like a gravity feed. So you still are able to get all the paint down and out. <laughs> but if you don't, just remember, you might have a tablespoon of leftover. With the Apollo, spray in the bottom because I prefer it. I can do the same thing. I flip it upside down and I'll drain down, spray the rest. A little bit left. Just another tiny little bit. Or put on top gravity feed. But now if you go gravity feed, what happens? Weight goes up here. Weight, bi weight bias is different. Down here, it's, it's more comfortable, but that's all personal choice, you know, personal preference. If you look at people who use air compressor spray gun, they're using gravity feed. That's just what they have to normally do is use gravity feed. 
And then you look at their whole profile with the hose. It's got a regulator on it. Then the hose itself might have a, a hose protectiveness on it. So now the hose is like way down here. You got a profile that starts from down here, goes way up here. So they're like spraying with this big long thing. See, the hose would be way down here, and then this thing on top. You got this big long thing of a contraption to spray their stuff. And they're fine with it, right? I'm not fine with that because I'm done with all that. I don't put, need to have a regulator down here anymore. I don't need to have the hose come down lower. And then when you get down to where you're getting into the jams, right? You got this whole other thing coming down. You this whole other thing on top. All right, yeah, it's, you need that gravity because this thing's got to have to have some vent to flow down and flow up. But turbine spraying does not need that because turbine spraying uses pressure to pressurize the cup to, to force it out through the front of the spray gun. And that is the, like one of the benefits, you know? It can, you got thicker material, you can force it through and then break it up at the air horns with the, with the air. But if you got thick stuff in a gravity feed, it's gonna come down real slow. <laughs> it's gonna flow out real slow because there's nothing pushing that. And then, yeah, it'll spray it, but it's coming down real slow. And hopefully that, that bleed hole up on top isn't clogged, otherwise it's gonna come down really slow. So when you're spraying thicker stuff, you could you know, get an advantage because you have air coming from the spray gun into the cup to pressurize it to squirt it through. And I did do a video on that whole thing where air compressor versus turbine spray gun years ago. Uh, I had to do a couple of things and then a repost you can see. But that's that pretty much shows you how gravity just kind of comes out. And some people say, yeah, just do the inch rule. And I read up on some place where you see it's an inch that comes out. Well, you know. It all depends on how big that hole is up on top. If it's a smaller hole and it's clogged up, it's not going to come out. You know, sometimes it get clogged up, or sometimes I'm, on my other ones, I used to make the hole bigger, so they come out more, you know, on my primary guns. But anyways, I guess that'll give you a lot of thought to ask me some questions, because uh, that's kind of what I have right now. I just want to say, if you're going to make a choice, it's going to be, I'd start with the pocketbook, because when you buy it right now, it's going to take money out of your pocketbook. But what you choose will save you some money in the long run. And it'll save you some money because you'll be using less paint because you'll be carrying less overspray. That's just one of the things you're just going to have to deal with whether uh, you're just, you know, just going to be doing it for a couple of things here and there or if you're going to try to do it as like making some money off of it. You know, um, you know paint is expensive. So, that's one thing you're going to say. Well, you know, I'm buying the cheapest paint anyway, so who cares? Or I'm buying the most expensive paint, so I better save that paint. So it's all up to you and how you can make that decision. But I can achieve the finish that I need with any of this stuff. So if you're able to do that, then go with what you want to get, you know. If you want to splurge, get something more expensive. If you want to be less, uh, more cost effective, get something that... Uh, it's not gonna put a dent right now. But if you're buying cheap paint anyways, sometimes cheap paint is not bad paint. Sometimes cheap paint, just for the price, is actually really good paint compared to the expensive paint, you know? It's just the way it works. Figure out which manufacturer you're gonna go with for your paint products, and then sort of figure out what you're trying to do with it. If you wanna have a show car, if you wanna have a show car, you can do it with the cheapest stuff, Still win, still win a show. You do a little more work, or you just have really good skills. But if you want to spend the money to feel like you, hey, I spent the money, so it, it should win. It's not always going to be the case, you know. It's, it's almost like if you didn't spend the money, you might not win either. So hopefully, hopefully that answered some questions. Um, there's still so much more to talk about, but I figure right now I just get out there and just try to. I try to write it. But then the whole thing started to get too long. I'm like, man, no one's going to read this. It's too long. I want to just try to talk about it and show you some stuff here. And maybe we can, you know, uh, help you figure it out somehow. Anyways, there's one other thing too I want to show you. There's this plug at the back of the Apollo's spray gun. See this one here? Has the overspray control at the back. That one. This one 
This is my original one, does not have it. It's already been plugged. They came out with this later on with OC control for their, also their machine, which has a wild PSI. It's their version. Um, as far as like the Avanti's thing here, this is their adjustment back here. Here's what I found out when I gauged it when I was spraying. When it's right about here, I'm only getting four PSI um, flow, flow pressure with the Avanti. So I'm getting four PSI coming out of here. And I got a little more orange peel because I had less, I had less air in general because I was choking it. And the proportion to the PSI to CFM there was less CFM, which had a little more peel. But with the Apollo, turning it down with the machine, I was getting solid, hardly any orange peel, laying it down without using the OC control. That could vary it at the machine. So it's still doable with this, but like a little bit more orange peel is not a bad thing if you know that, hey, you're going to be saying it anyways. But the part where I always look at is like, yeah, you sprayed it, you sanded it, and most of it is, most of it is on the ground. <laughs> because now you're still left with the same dilemma of, like, well, it didn't lay out smooth enough. And this happens at the body shop too, the collision center. Like uh, one painter, I won't say his name, will prime it for the text. And then the text is like, man, all the orange peel I gotta sand off. And then another painter will lay it out smoother. Or like um, another machine, like we use the Avanti or the Apollo in, in the shop and lay it out smoother, less work later on. But then we tried the Accu spray and it got a little more um, orange peely. And that's because of the sometimes the sprayer, hold on. So, you know, the Accu Spray's got these, they work with the air compressor gun set up. You got these uh, removable things here. So I was trying to dissect this design and see what they're doing here. Okay, how they're using their thing and what the air horn looks like. And Because, man, I was like, why is there so much orange peel on this primered panel using this thing? <laughs> So and so is spraying it. <laughs> Cause the worst thing about working on something if you're in primer is whoever primes it's in primed smooth. <laughs> you know, so anyways, that's just off topic. Uh, you got a lot if you have a lot of questions, I'm sure you will now. Um, I'd be happy to answer them. We're going to try to get it here in like a structured class, so like I'll pick a topic, that's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on like, alright, you're going to learn how to adjust, or how to clean your spray gun. Okay, you can do that right now, if you want to learn it real quick. I guess I could do that real fast, because it doesn't take long anyways. So let's just say you're working with the Avanti. Alright, first thing you do is... Ah, uh, now I'm going to do that every day, it's getting too long. All right, well, you might as well. <laughs> okay, hold up here. Okay. So let's say we're working the Avanti. We're gonna need the Avanti, uh, need the Avanti wrench. Avanti wrench, this thing. Good. Let's say you're spraying, this thing's pressurized, you're done spraying. Thing's empty. First thing you do, first thing I do, is you know disconnect. Then I'd be, as I'm walking with it, I'd be actually pulling this first. I'd be pulling the trigger. Letting all the air come, letting this all come down again, all right? 
Uh, well, yes and no. Yeah, we'll just talk about it some other day. We'll, we'll talk about it so I can demonstrate it because, uh, yeah, I'll just do that. We'll just, we'll just wait. You got to wait till tomorrow. You can wait for the next video on that one. Because right now you're still trying to figure out which machine to choose. Yeah, which machine you can choose. You can try to build your own. You can try to get one as a kit. You can uh, save some money and get a more expensive one. Or, you know, which one should you get? You get a used one, refurbish, you know. It's gonna be a big decision. You're gonna wonder, like, man, what should I get? Should I get this one or should I get that one? Like I said, start out first of all with your budget. And then figure out, well, what's my overall budget? What kind of paint am I gonna buy? And what am I painting? <laughs> am I painting a car that I need to just make it look nice? Or am I painting a show car? And if I am painting a show car, I want to prove my ego. I'm going to use the cheapest thing to say, yeah, I can do it with this. Or if I don't care about that, no ego, you just want to say, you know, I want the best finish possible. I might use a combination of all of these. One for this, doing one process, this for another process. I've only had one spray gun to start out with when I got my first turbine. There's only one. And now I got kind of spoiled. Now I got like four here. <laughs> and then when I got the Avanti, I got these labeled one and two. The reason why I leave them one and two because the first one I got, I got it just as a turbine replacement gun for the Avanti 5 stage. Then I got the one that came with the kit. And then I want to go clean the inside after I used water to, to do some testing with it. So I look at the inside, I'm like, wow, okay, one version has more like internal polished out areas, no casting, this and that. The other one had a little more, I'll show it to you. It had less um, casting finish on the inside. So then the one that had the best casting finish on the inside, I labeled number one and kept number one. The other one, I just sort of said, well, that'll be my number two because I want to have a number one gun because I know the number one gun had the best of all of the above. So, yeah. Here's how I'll show it to you. Okay, and that's just, that's just manufacturing, you know? Manufacturing, manufacturing differences. But, if I can see it, I'm gonna pick the best one. Just so I have a better start at the beginning of the race. So, here you go, show it to you. All right, so this one is number one. This one right here. Number one, look at the internal. I'm gonna get a flashlight in a second. This is number two, it's already wearing off the two. But look at the comparison, I'll get the flashlight right now so you can see. And this might be a little thing to you, but it's a big thing to me. <laughs> Did I see that? If I see that, okay, look to the right. See how the right is not as smooth as the left? Do you see the difference? The casting is smoother on that replacement spray gun in the box. The casting is not as smooth as the there. Look. So that's why this one's number two, this one's number one. 
So number one, the internals, just in the manufacturing, are slightly different. But, that's just the way that is sometimes. This is one for sure. That's two. Now, I guess you could do the Apollo look. That to the Apollo. Take it apart. It's no longer a puzzle. Like, this could be a puzzle in the beginning. Like, where does this all go? <laughs> I can show you some <laughs> shortcut steps to remember. It's all in the sayings. Like, uh, the Apollo is, it's like Oreo cookie, the sandwich spread in the middle is your white thing in the middle. <laughs> Show what that white thing is. It's a white thing. See, that's in the middle. That's a, like an Oreo cookie. The white filling is in the center, or is in the center of the, the two cookies: the, the chocolate cookie and the the shiny cookie on top. But you put that in the center, so it's not like wrong on on this side. Okay. The other one. So all these pieces can be a lot to learn in the beginning and you might put it together wrong and your spray gun is not going to spray right. I'll give you a class on how to put together. I know Apollo's got their version. Jake's got his version too. Now well, I do it. I'm going to follow the rule of what's mandated for cleaning spray guns which is less than three ounces of cleaning solution or you put it in a spray gun cleaner. I tried putting this in a spray gun cleaner at the body shop. Not a good thing. I don't like the spray gun cleaners because they take all the waste and put it through all the passages. And I think that that just dirtifies the inside of the air passages also. So I don't like to do that, I like to hand clean it. Because you want the air passages nice and clean. And I never really liked those. So I'll clean it with my hand. And I can clean it with less than one ounce of cleaning solution. So, this is pretty much an internal look at those. They're castings inside. They're fairly consistent with how the the casting finishes. Look on the side there, look on the side there. Careful not to drop it. You know? So, yeah, you're going to pay a little more because definitely they've done that part there. And it's all a matter of like just the finesse. But, there, got a bunch of guns, spray guns taken apart, okay? <laughs> so I have a look at it. <laughs> look at that. battery and the camera doesn't go down. Let's see. What I'll do is put these together. I'll do them on the table right here. Put these together in camera view so you can see how they would go together effortlessly if you're used to using this stuff. Pretty used to it so now I'll talk you through it. Okay, so first thing we do is we take this. This is a power spray gun. Now this hole lines up with that. Remember, the filling is on is on in between the this filling's in the middle. 
okay? This, and you need to have a smiley face. So the smiley face, smiley face is like this. Smiley face like that. You need to smile, smiley face to line that hole up to that hole. So you get the smiley face, and then you got the indexing uh, tab right there. You put that in there. So you get purchased with the hole. Then you get the uh, tip. Screw it on. And it's about like that. So you can still move the fan adjustment ring. Then you go over here. You put the uh, needle. Now, these needles are different sizes, actually. One I'm using is one. This is a 1.8. Goes in like that. Take the uh, mixture adjustment knob. And you don't want to cross thread it. So you got to be careful. Wait. And then what I do is I bottom it out. And I go boom, boom. Release some tension off the spring. Take the air cap, air cap ring. Get it so the letter's on top, like that. That spray gun's done. Go over to my spray gun here. Same thing. This time, these already have the indexing thing right there. So, but you still want the smiley face. This is the smiley face has to be like this smiley face. If it's like that, that's wrong smiley face. It needs to be this smiley face. So when you flip it this way, there's your smiley face. Make sure that the hole will line up. There's your smiley face. Cream filling in the middle. Goes in like that. We got the smiley face. Then we take the air distributor and we put it to that hole. Take this. Like that. Tighten it up. Put the air cap on right now. Line up the B on top like this. Just so the ring moves. Take the needle, put it in the back. Slide it in. I don't oil my stuff. I never put oil on my stuff. I don't believe in that. I've never had an issue. So if you want to add oil, it's up to you, but I don't want to have any risk of whatever. I just go boom, boom. That's done. That's done. Now let's get to the Ivanti. So the Ivanti, first thing you do is, this is uh, gun number two. Put this in here, which is a needle, or the, the tip. Tip right there. Snug it like that. Take the needle, put it in the back, all the way in. Then over here is a spring and a knob. Boom, boom. All right. Then you take the uh, this thing, and there's little notches here. You want to line up them notches like that, and so you can push this down. Like there. And then here's a tricky part because this has to sort of line up with having this go down so it can seat. See that? It seats. Then when it seats, then you put the ring on top. Oops. See how it moves? But it's got a seat. There's a way you adjust the, the, the shape of this particular spray gun as you do this. Okay? And the direction from horizontal to vertical spray. So that's done. So the same thing here. Start out with putting the uh, nozzle, the tip. The needle and tip, the nozzle, the needle. Okay, snug it. Oops, 
snug it like that. Then we take the needle, put it in there like there. Grab the spring, spring right there. Take the mixture knob. Boom, boom. Go in the front, put this thing, make sure the it's able to slide through there. You, I guess you could use it like this where it's already in here, but then it always tends to drop not right. So I'll just do this. Take it like this, put it on tap so it's already sort of there. And then, then it goes on, see? And then you can do this. And you're good to go. And always try to protect the, the air the air thing, we got something. Try to protect the air thing, he's here. So he's always up. But, that's it. There you have it. They're assembled. Didn't take that long either. So, just wanna put this back. Thanks for watching the video.